It's time for Pure Performance. Get your stopwatches ready. It's time for Pure Performance with Andy Grabner and Brian Wilson. Welcome everyone to another episode of Pure Performance, even though I think this intro has probably been played now by Brian, uh, who unfortunately today is not with us. Brian Wilson, and uh, you know, my co-host, uh, he's the magic, the magician behind the scenes, but also behind the microphone who uh, couldn't make it today. I'm sure he will be back next time, but I do have a great guest with me, Nina, and instead of incorrectly pronouncing, I I'll give it a try. Nina Tollefsen, and I'm sure I got it wrong, but Nina, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Very good. So how do I correctly pronounce your name and where does it come from, actually? Tollefsen, and it's Norwegian. No. Um, so most people will say Tollefsen, but it's actually Tollefsen. Tollefsen. Okay. But so you're I, very close. <laughs> hey, Nina, uh, first time on the show, hopefully not the last. Yes. But as you are the first time on the show, and I think you told me it's the first podcast for you. It is my first. The first. I, yes. Do you want to tell the audience uh, who you are, what you do, and maybe not just what you're doing right now uh, in your job, but also what you did before? Sure. Um, yeah. So I um, have been at Dynatrace for almost four years now, which is crazy to say. It feels like it's been a lot longer and shorter at the same time. Um, but I started as a graphic designer here. Mm -hmm. um, it was when we only had one person on our brand team. Um, now we're up to 11. So we've had pretty tremendous growth since I've been here. Um, and I have gone from graphic designer to senior designer and now art director at Dine and Trace. Um, and sort of as our team grew, we got to kind of sort of settle into our little niches of the brand team. And I have settled into Perform and I am the art director of Perform, which um, takes a village and is certainly a full-time job year round. So uh, yeah. I, I am quite busy these days. Yeah. And talking about quite busy, I think there's a couple of things I want to quickly highlight. First of all, you are, with your role, an unusual guest for us. But yeah. as we will then discuss the topic, I think it makes total sense because the topic today is a lot about automation and automation is what has been driving our discussions over the last years, uh, typically around software delivery and software operations, but you're bringing in a different angle on automation. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say, you talk about amazing scale, right? Because Dynatrace itself is an organization, like many organizations out there, we need to scale in different aspects, we scale our software, but we also scale our organizations. And you said from one to 11 in four years in the team? Yep, yes. And we are currently hiring even more. So continuing yeah. to grow pretty quickly, yeah. And I assume, and this is the, the one of the points of discussion later on, obviously you can scale with adding more bodies, right? That's one way to scale, but we know that's just one kind of answer to the problem of scalability. The other coin is automation or the other side of the coin is automation and getting more stuff done, even though um, you only have limited resources available. Right? I think that's a right. good point. And the third thing, and we'll cover all three in detail, is you brought up Perform. Perform is around the corner. Right? Just at the time of the recording, we have five more weeks, I think. Yep, almost yeah. there. Almost there. And... Uh, first of all, I think we want to just tell the audience that is listening in, in case you haven't yet heard, uh, perform, even though we would have loved to do it hybrid, so in person and virtual, we had to make the tough call to uh, do it fully virtual. Right? It is what it is, right? I think it's the, the best, unfortunately, for everyone uh, that we, um, in the, well, I guess we don't need to explain why it is, right? I think everybody knows about it, that uh, the health and safety of everyone is more important than just being together and have fun. Yeah. Um, but Perform last year, uh, or actually this year, uh, 11 months ago, triggered the reason why I'm talking to you, why I brought you on the show, because it was Dave yeah. Anderson, uh, who yeah. is uh, who was kind of, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Dynatrace, Mr. Brand Ambassador, and uh, he worked with you. And he said, um, he left Anna Trace in the summer, but then he sent me a LinkedIn message and said, Andy, you need to talk with Nina because what she did back for Perform 2021 was amazing. It's a great automation story. 
So get a hold of her and do a podcast with her. Yes. I'm, thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Tina, can you explain us a little bit actually what happened back then and, and why, why you're on the show? Yeah, so um, so perform while I've worked at Dine Trace has always been a, a massive effort. Um, and I was kind of the only art director. I had some production team support, um, but we really just um, it was an all hands effort. And it was just it's a ma it's a massive it's a massive effort um, putting on perform. And each year, you know, we are scaling perform. We're making it bigger and better. Um, but not adding more bodies. Um, so it got kind of harder each year that we did perform, but you know, we always pulled it off. Um, and then 2021 was our first time ever doing a virtual perform. So there was, uh, certainly a learning curve and lots of kind of trial and error, lots of pivoting, um, lots of kind of like working really quickly in one direction and having to suddenly change to another direction. And so, um, in addition to just like the standard sort of massive effort that you would have to put around a, a perform, you're constantly having to redo it, redo it, redo it, and like try sort of new um, software and programs and strategies and things like that. So it got to the point where it just was, it felt impossible. It was overwhelming. I was not getting very much sleep at all. Um, and of course we pulled off an amazing perform, but, um, I was not doing so well. I was very exhausted, very overwhelmed, um, and never wanting to do anything like that again. Yeah. Uh, so because of this sort of difficult experience where we couldn't throw new bodies at, the problem, um, I had to sort of think of how to get myself out of this problem, um, in different ways. And of course, working, um, uh, at Dynatrace for so long automation has been, you know, top of our sort of like marketing message. And so I learned of this new, new program, this new program called Figma, um, that we were just starting to experiment with, um, wireframe websites with. Mm -hmm. And I learned of the automation um, capabilities behind Figma and uh, just sort of like took off um, in the direction of automating everything mm -hmm. um, after that. We, we want to make we want yeah we want to make sure that by the way that we reach out to Figma because I think the story that you're telling here is a perfect testimonial to uh, to also to yeah. their, their services that they provide yeah. Oh, it's, it's completely changed our workflow. It's changed my life, to be honest. It sounds dramatic, but it has. Um, because not only did it ultimately make my life easier, and it wasn't easy sort of um, getting to the point where we, are, where we are now, where it's a well-oiled machine. And um, uh, it took probably, I would say, five months of continuing to suffer and learning this new program and trying to figure out how to automate Mm -hmm. um, all of our workflow. Um, but at this point, now that we have pivoted to a fully virtual event, um, Figma has actually been a, an incredible tool. Like it's, it's proven again, how, uh, kind of instrumental it has been in helping our team scale without necessarily adding more bodies. Um, like for example, you make a master component that has the date info. Uh -huh. and um, designate, designates the virtual versus in-person date info. We just have to change that now in one place. And every single place that we have now um, used that information, it's automatically going to populate. There's no manual changing. There's mm -hmm. no risk of making typos with all the different places you have to change um, the information like has happened in the past. And it's just like that. Like it's, it's amazing. It's truly yeah. like hours of work that has now taken one minute. Yeah, and it's I think this is this is why this is so interesting for me, right? I come from the software engineering side, and I think we we also are challenged with the same with the same things because I, mean, I remember when we were sitting down in Waltham, I was there in I think October November timeframe, and we had a little chat in the in the in the cafeteria, and you then told to me I perform. I think one of the amazing things about perform is that we're not only doing it in English, but we are providing it for different languages for different geographies. Um, that means we have different landing pages, different, I mean, we, we, we really make a, an, an amazing, I think we're doing an amazing job in making sure the whole global community kind of, you know, connects to perform. And that's a lot of effort. But if I draw the parallels uh, with software engineering, 
there we have the same problem. You have one piece of software, but then you need to run it with different small flavors, right? And in software engineering, yeah. well, we call this often, you know, we do uh, AP testing, we do in canary deployments, we're using software with feature flags, or we are, like what you are doing, we are externalizing certain parameters into config files, and then we can run the same instance of the same software just with different input parameters. So the software, you know, change it once, but then all the input parameters make sure that you know, it, it shows up in the right place uh, for all the different flavors you run it. And I think this is why I, I really like the, while, while you are marketing yeah. and, and I talk a lot with DevOps engineers and site reliability engineers, it's still a very similar thing, uh, challenges that we're facing. And, and, and automation uh, is one piece and externalizing data is another great concept, what, you, what, is, what Figma allows you to do. So it is really phenomenal to see these parallels. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. And it's funny because the entire time I've sort of been like crafting this, this uh, whole process and transition to Figma and automating all of sort of our workflow, mm -hmm. um, I have been constantly drawing those parallels just because I'm in marketing. So I've, I've been, in, you know, very hands-on with his messaging in my four years. And I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm living kind of like the Dynatrace uh, customer experience and how it's changed my life. Yeah. Hey, um, so I think this should also be a message for, for everyone out there, right? Not just software engineers, not only marketeers, whatever role you're in, think about it that you can you can do more with less in the end, right? Um, automation is key. Now, do, can you tell me a little bit on, on, on um, I mean, obviously you moved to Figma, that was one thing, but was this, and, and, and I don't know, you, you were told to look at Figma, I think, or did you find Figma? Did you first figure out, hey, I, I you know, there's a certain manual task you're doing all over again, and therefore you decided to find something that can automate it? Can you walk us a little bit through the process again? Yeah, so it's sort of a combination. Um, we we're previously using Illustrator and Sketch, um, mostly. And uh, my boss had learned about this new program called Figma, which seemed to be sort of like quickly being adopted um, as standard for website design and website prototypes. Mm -hmm. um, so that was sort of the use case for us, just giving it a try. Mm -hmm. um, we just downloaded the free trial and we hadn't even signed on with them yet. It was just kind of sort of just like a, a quick little ask of us to just see what we thought. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as he said that it had automation capabilities, my mind clicked with, mm -hmm. well, what else can we do with that? Like is it just restricted to website design? Like, can I design ads, social templates, email banners? Like what else can we do here? Mm -hmm. um, and come to find out that there are also tons of plugins that you can even build yourself. Like they've made it so that it's pretty user-friendly. You don't have to be a coder to build a plugin. Um, but there are tons of also public free plugins that you can use to even further customize the programs for kind of whatever you need. So even print, um, we can use. So, um, yeah, so it, it was introduced to me by my boss, mm -hmm. but, uh, just as a free trial, try it out, see what you think for wireframing a website. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, at, at that time was sort of my peak, uh, overwhelming time and so that's where i sort of clicked and said what else can we do like how can i how can i get out of this like sort of insane pile of work that is completely unmanageable like what, what can we do here yeah i remember a quote but i don't know where who, who made uh, where i heard the quote from from home but it's kind of like uh, if you do the same thing manually more than you know once a day or once a week if you have a certain task, you're repeating all the time. And I think even if it's just like once or twice a week, then I think it should be a task that you put on top of your list to automate. And yep. um, and I think hopefully this is something that our listeners can take home with them, right? If you are if you're feeling here, why do I need to copy paste these things from one system to another just to create a report every week? If I do it every week, and if it only takes 10 minutes, but if you can eliminate those 10 minutes. 10 minutes times 52 weeks is a lot of time, right? And, right. and, that's, and also think about the other things with automation. Um, it also means that not only you can do it, uh, but others can, or let's say others can trigger the automation itself, but the automation can do it themselves. And therefore it frees you up from, from, uh, yes. from work. Yeah? So it's funny you say that actually, because, um, so I have automated our templates to the point that, my boss yesterday asked me to just give him a template to plug his copy yeah. into and that he would do it himself, which is 
unheard of. Like it was such a, um, sort of point of like a, a proud point for me that I had built the templates to a point that like he could just go in and do it himself. But, um, another thing about the program too, is it's, uh, in the cloud. So, um, all anybody can be in the program working together at the same time. And that's not just designers kind of working on the file itself. Like we can have all sorts of, um, different teams in there providing feedback, reviewing, um, Mm -hmm. in, in, in a sort of live scenario. Whereas in the past, it would just be such a manual handoff, all kinds of tools required to communicate, provide feedback, um, for the developers to inspect. So now with Figma developers can actually inspect the file right within Figma to get their specs in order to implement, um, the designs on the website or ads or however we're using it. It's so funny. Again, I always have to draw the parallels to Dynatrace, right? Because what, what you just said is, First of all, you started with the free trial. Obviously, in my I think in mo- most modern software companies that sell software, software services have a free trial to get you hooked on it or show you the value of it. And you found the value in our customers that see our free trial do the same thing. But then you said, right, everything is in one place, but you have different stakeholders that do different things, but still it's the same data set. There's no copying from one tool to another where you have a break in technology where there's a chance of error. It's like in Dynatrace, you have all the data for your developers, for your SRE, your DevOps, for your business, for your infrastructure people. Uh, but then we give them the individual view that they need. So the infrastructure people will get the information from the Kubernetes clusters, from the host, the developers look at their code base. They can all share their data very easily and then collaborate. And I think it's just yeah. phenomenal that you are talking about a completely different software product, but there's so many things in, that they have in, in parallel. Oh yeah, absolutely. And also even just the gaps of communication that can happen yeah. between like email and Jira and, um, you know, like the different teams sort of working in silos in their own tools yeah. to all be communicating in one place has been incredible. Yeah. It's, I, so it's like, this hasn't even just changed my workflow and my sort of life and my job. It's kind of changed everyone's. Yeah. Hey, and uh, so we have, we have five weeks out to perform. I think by the time this airs, maybe we're like three to four weeks out to perform. Um, I think we're all looking forward to it, right? Even though it's just virtual, but thanks to the work that you are doing, it's going to be a smooth experience for everyone. Um, is there, like, I want to take this as a chance to also um, inform people what they will hear at perform, what they see at perform, right? Um, I know you've been working a lot on the content for Perform. Is there anything that even you as a marketer always said, this strikes out to me. This is why I think Perform is going to be a great event for our community, for our customers, partners, and people that want to become Dynatrace customers in the future. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm personally quite excited to see Simone Biles. Um, I think that even though she isn't quite in the tech world, uh, it's sort of like me, I guess, even though I work for Dynatrace, I am a, in the creative sort of aspect, uh, the brand, uh, not quite so into the uh, technology side of Dynatrace, but yeah, she's, she's obviously a game changer. She, um, I think is going to have some really interesting perspectives on sort of how to look at, um, standards differently and Mm -hmm. to sort of ignore the norms of how you're supposed to do things and how you're supposed to see things. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see her. And and I guess also thinking outside the box as well. And then, you know, the, the theme is game changers, right? So yeah. like she has been a game changer in, 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 in the way in her sport and in her role, you have been a game changer uh, for Dynatrace to make sure that we can actually deliver these events to our customers. And like it's the whole, you're supporting the whole end-to-end user experience when it comes to reading about the event, signing up for it. Um, and I think that's why I think game changer is perfect. And you, uh, yeah. you are, you're part of the team of the game changer team. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. I have, yeah. I'm happy to fall underneath that um, yeah. umbrella. Yeah. I'm, I'm really much looking forward to um, to having Kelsey Hightower uh, on stage, even though I would have obviously loved to see him live on stage because I am co-hosting the keynote with him. I, um, I'm sure just uh, seeing him virtually uh, will also just be amazing because he has a lot of things to say. He's Mr. Kubernetes and pretty sure many, many uh, people have different names for him, but the Kubernetes is kind of uh, the world that he lives in, that he educated, and it's great to have him on on the show and uh, educate our community about the power of Kubernetes, but also the challenges, uh, the complexity, but also how we can tame this complexity with Dynatrace and how Kubernetes can become a game changer for organizations in the future. Yeah. 
So what is next for you? I mean, I know Perform 2022 is coming up now. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to do, I guess, even though with all the automation. But yes. what's, what's, what's next? So what's next? Um, so now that I've freed up so much of my time, <laughs> I get to take on even more. Um, so Dynatrace Go uh, will be next, but um, I think just continuing to now look into automating. Honestly, mm-hmm. I've gotten such a passion for it. Um, and there's, I've really only touched the surface with Figma, especially just because of like the whole sort of like massive library of plugins that you can use to automate your workflow in all kinds of new and unexpe- unexpected ways. You can build your own. I think there's just so much more I can do. Um, I might be automating myself out of my job. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just sort of see how, how far I can push this thing. That's a good, that's a good comment. I wanted to bring this up because um, automation, it's a, um, a blessing. And for some, it's a curse, right? Because some people fear automation that it takes their job away. And you just brought up a statement that I first heard from Nestor, uh, one of our back then customers, not colleague, Nestor Sabato. He was working for Citrix and he was on stage and he was saying every year he's trying to automate himself of his current role, but into his next role. And I thought that was a pretty cool comment. And I I just want to, so from your perspective, you don't see automation as a threat to your job. Do you no, think? actually, I would say um, I really like Nestor's perspective there. I would say that's exactly my perspective as well. Um, yeah. yeah, and automating myself into my next role, getting these current responsibilities off of my plate mm-hmm. um, so I can get on to sort of something bigger and better. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, but it also means, I mean, I, I, I understand some people's fear, obviously, because it also means constant change, right? It also means constant change for you because you're automating stuff that you do now well, but you automate it and then you are moving into a new thing where you need to learn new things. Yes, absolutely. I would say I'm personally um, excited by that. I know change is scary to a lot of people, but for me, I find it exciting. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the right attitude, right? Because the only, the, the only constant thing in life is change. I'm sure this was also a quote from somebody famous before, uh, but I, I think that's just the way it is, right? And um, I'm sure there are certain maybe ways to get through life with never without ever changing, but I consider this also a little bit boring, I would say. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, a little change is good. Yeah, change is exciting. <laughs> as long as you stick with your observability platform, it should be done at least. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very nice. Um, Nina, is there anything else we've missed? Is there anything part of the story, things that you were excited about um, that we've missed and that we want to make sure we need to cover? Um, let's see. Yeah, I would say one thing we haven't touched on um, as thoroughly quite uh, that's sort of also changed my life in this job uh, via Figma is just the sort of um, the room for error with making manual changes and Mm -hmm. having to implement them in a ton of places when one little thing has to change. Um, That's been a massive perk of Figma is just changing something in one place and it automates everywhere. You don't have to worry about sort of like uh, becoming numb to reading that same little bit of copy in a ton of different assets, a ton of different places and missing one little character. Mm-hmm. Uh, misspelling or or whatever it's it's there it's it's automated you don't have to worry yeah. about it pretty amazing yeah and, and as you said i think there's two there's there's two things you brought up here it's it's a um the 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 chains of error right because obviously if you do things manually yes you get good in it but there's a chance that you are just you know at some point not dozing off but you're kind of like losing focus because yeah i'm doing this and then you type the wrong thing and then I think it's also the, the fear that you are just getting so used to just doing the same thing all over again and kind of getting into this wheel of, yeah, I'm just, I think this is where people, and I hope, hopefully not offending anybody, but this is where people may also then start getting lazy and just like accepting the status quo and just say, okay, I'm doing yep. this well and I'm doing this all over again and this is all I want to do. And, um, but the error aspect is really important, yeah. Yeah. And there's also, I mean, nobody wants to do that type of work, you know, so where's the passion? There's no passion in doing that type of work. So, you know, it's, it is so easy to get lazy, I think, in those types of tasks. Um, So yeah, another sort of side effect of that, of that, of not having to do those things anymore is you get to do Mm -hmm. the type of work that you are passionate about and like sort of the reason you did get into the role you got into and the, the field you got into. Yeah. 
And then the, the other thing maybe to, to add to this, obviously, if you have automation and if with the click of a button, let's say many different things get updated. If you make a mistake in the input, it obviously gets updated in all different places in the wrong way. But thanks to automation, you fail fast and then we can you can recover fast. I think that's also the yeah, nice absolutely. thing about automation. Yep, absolutely. Perfect. Hey, yes. Nina, I uh, I wish you all the best for the remaining time to perform. I know you still have a lot of work to do and I know it's going to be an awesome event. And thanks to you, it's going to be a game changer event. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and yeah. um, hope this was not the last time we have you on the show. I'm sure there's more coming out of I the uh, out of from your end. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll have even more automation to talk about next time around. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear the next topic, maybe just a suggestion, right? Don't have to comment on it, but I want to hear how you in your job, as you're designing all these web properties, how you're using Dynatrace to also get feedback from how our customers are interacting with these web properties. Right? I want to know. Interacting with the what? Interacting with the websites that you're building, interacting with the registration pages, interacting with perform. I want to see if there is a... Uh, right? Yeah, actually. So, um, so in the past, when we were uh, working in these kind of offline silent pro uh, products um, programs, it was very difficult to produce assets. So it took a long time to produce them. We couldn't produce a lot of them. Um, but now with these automated templates, we have been able to get a ton of ads out in um, in to the world and um, we've been able to A-B test and like really get important data and uh, feedback back on those ads really quickly and be able to pivot really quickly. And um, it's, it's definitely been a game changer for the advertisements for sure. Uh, that's great. Yeah, I think that's that's also an, another nice aspect. Right? With automation, automation allows you to react fast yep. to the impact that you have with these changes. Yeah, I get exactly. Yeah, and even just getting yeah the quantity of ads out that we were able to do um, with the number of people we had working on Perform would have been impossible in the past before Figma. Yeah, data driven market, data driven, data driven marketing automation. Yes, right? that's basically <laughs> what it is because you use the data that you get from the automation to drive the automation. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Cycle. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Hey, with this, Nina, thank you so much. And uh, so. it was a pleasure having you. And uh, hopefully, you know, there will be time where we can travel again, where we can see each other in person. Yes. And I want to say uh, sorry again that Brian couldn't be here. I'm sure he would have enjoyed it and uh, no would have had a lot of additional questions. But uh there will be Thanks another time. podcast with you and we'll have him. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Thank you. For everybody that is listening in, if you're still interested in Perform, just go to our Dynatrace website or uh, go to perform.dynatrace.com. But I'm pretty sure it's probably impossible to miss Perform if you find any, if you go to the Dynatrace website. Uh, join us for the uh, keynotes. Join us for the breakouts. We also have uh, hands-on training days, the first two days. So uh, make sure if you want to learn something, if you want to do some hands-on with Anatrace, to, uh, to join us at that event. It's first week of February. With this, all the best and stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.